Let's discuss probability. This portion of the class is not in your textbook, so be sure to read the probability supplement located on the course webpage and work through the probability worksheet handed out in class. Probability is defined as the long run proportion of times an event would occur if a random process were repeated indefinitely. An event is something we are interested in, not unlike a variable. A random process could be something like flipping a coin, rolling a die, picking an envelope, driving to work, or selecting a student. There are two types of probability we should discuss. Unconditional probability is how likely an event is to occur within the population or if the random process were repeated over and over with no restrictions. We denote an unconditional probability using this notation. The P stands for probability. A is the event of interest, although we could use any other capital letter to denote an event. We would read this as P of A. This is not a multiplication problem. This is function notation, the probability of an event, in this case, event A. Conditional probability is how likely an event is to occur within some subset of the population. In other words, we are restricting the random process to already know some event has occurred. We would denote it with this notation and read it probability of B given A. The vertical line we could also read as conditioned on. In other words, we're saying we know event A has already occurred. Now we want to know how likely is B to occur. We have restricted the population of random processes to only include those where A has already happened and want to know how likely B is to occur. I'll give you a minute to read through this question and then provide you with the solution and explanation. Did you pick answer choice C? If so, you're correct. English can be tricky, especially when talking about probability. The key words to this question are that the randomly selected student who owns a cell phone. We're saying something about the student. We are conditioning on the student owning a cell phone. In other words, we are given event A has occurred. The probability a randomly selected student who owns a cell phone does not own an iPod is therefore the probability of B complement given A. Let's say in words what the other options mean. Option A would read, the probability a randomly selected student owns a cell phone and does not own an iPod. Note if the word and is in the notation, it must be in the statement of what it means and vice versa. Option B would read, the probability a randomly selected student who does not own an iPod does own a cell phone, or the probability a randomly selected student owns a cell phone if or given they do not own an iPod. Option choice D would say the probability a randomly selected student does not own an iPod. Finally, thinking back to the definition of probability as a long run proportion, how would you interpret the value 0.25? Out of 100,000 students who own a cell phone, about 25,000 of them will not own an iPod. There are two ways to visualize probabilities. The first that we'll look at are two-way tables. Two-way tables are far more common and most students find them easier to understand. In a two-way table or contingency table, one event and its complement make up the rows and another event and its complement make up the columns. The display here shows how to use the values to find any probability you might want. This can be confusing. It helps to break down into a couple of key ideas. Unconditional probabilities, where there is no vertical line and you are not given anything, are always divided by the overall total, i. The margins give you how often an event occurred, ignoring the other event. The interior cells give how often both events occurred at the same time. If you are looking for a given or conditional probability, then the denominator becomes the total for the event you conditioned on. For instance, if you condition on event B occurring, the denominator is the total for B, letter G. If you condition on a event A complement occurring, the denominator is the total for A complement, 
letter F. Now let's look at an example. The following data is from a survey of 479 children. The parents were asked about the level of darkness in their child's room as a baby and whether the child developed myopia or nearsightedness later in life. This is what we call an observational study to be discussed in chapter four. From the table, we see that those who slept with a nightlight or in fully lit room before age two had higher incidence of nearsightedness later in childhood. Note that if you add the percentages across the rows, they add to 100%. That tells you the percentages are conditional probabilities. What variable have they conditioned on? Well, because we must add across the slept with variable, that is what we have conditioned on. Slept with or the level of darkness in the child's room. Let's define events such that A is representing a child slept with a nightlight as an infant, and B is representing a child did not develop myopia. Explain in words what 66% means and write it notationally. In notation, 0.66 would be represented as the probability of event B given event A, or P of B given A. In words, we would say if we repeatedly randomly select a child who used a nightlight as an infant, about 66% of those children will not develop myopia. Take a minute and answer these four questions. Pause the video and then play to check your answer. Remember, A represents the child sleeping with a nightlight and B represents the child did not develop myopia. From the table, the probability of A then is an unconditional probability, so our total needs to be out of the 479 children. A was representing nightlight, so 232 children slept with a nightlight out of the 479 total, so P of A is 232 out of 479. How about the probability of A and B? This is still an unconditional probability, so our total still should be our 479 total children. How many satisfy A and B occurring, or slept with a nightlight and did not develop myopia? Well, we have 153 in this group, so the probability of A and B should be 153 over 479. Question three asked about the probability of A given B or the probability of sleeping with a nightlight given that they did not develop myopia. We are conditioning on B, conditioning on no myopia. So now our total is out of the 342 children that did not develop myopia. Of those 342, 153 slept with a nightlight. So probability of A given B is 153 out of 342. What if we reverse the conditioning? Now I'm conditioning on A having occurred. I'm conditioning on the child having slept with a nightlight. So there were 232 children who slept with a nightlight. Of those, 153 did not develop myopia. So the probability of B given A is 153 out of 232. Note that these two conditional probabilities are very different numbers. In other words, you cannot just flip where the letters are and get the same value. Conditional probabilities are important to know what you are conditioning on. If you've heard of the Monty Hall problem, this is a similar counterintuitive result. I'll let you read through this example and then you should fill in a table to represent this situation. The two events that we're interested are which envelope is selected, $21 or $40, and which bill is selected, the $20 bill or the $1 bill. Pause the video to create your table, then play the video to find the solution. Let's pretend here. Say we are given 100 envelopes. How many will contain $21? How many will contain 40? There are half of each, so we should have 50 of each envelope. 
Now, if we select one of the $21 envelopes, how likely are we to grab the $20 bill? There's a 50% chance of that happening. So in 25 of the 50 envelopes, we would grab the 20, and in the other 25, we would grab the one. If we select one of the $40 envelopes, how likely are we to grab a $20 bill? There are only $20 bills in the $40 envelope, so we would have to grab a 20. In 50 of the 50 envelopes, we would grab a $20 bill. Never would we grab a one. Use addition to fill in the row totals. Now let's reverse the conditioning. If we know we grabbed a $20 bill, which happens 75 times out of 100 envelopes, how likely is it that we got the $40 envelope? 50 of those 75 envelopes were for $40. So 50 out of 75, or two thirds of the time, we would have a $40 envelope if we already grabbed a $20 bill. Not what you thought, is it? In general, we can use a few sentences with information to fill in any two-way table. Start by using a nice big round number like 100,000 for the overall total. Then use whatever unconditional probability you are given to fill in the column or row depending on how you labeled your table, margins. Next, use the conditional probabilities to fill in the interior cells by multiplying the given conditional probability by the margin total that you just found. Finally, add down the columns or across the rows to fill in your last two marginal cells. Double check that everything still adds correctly. Also note, you should not round to whole numbers. If an interior cell is a decimal, leave it that way so the probabilities you calculate are correct.